Hi everybody. Da jia hao. I welcome you to J Palace Yamingo. My name is Yaya. Life is so fickle. Even more so when someone snuffs out the flame. So, let's get started. Warning. This video contains mentions of death, violence, and altogether unpleasant things. Please be mindful of this and click away now if any of these topics make you feel uncomfortable. When you think of serial killers, you think of Jack the Ripper, Dahmer, Gacy, or the Zodiac Killer. But there is one that precedes them by at least 2,000 years. While many people think that the first ever serial killer was Jules de Ré in recorded history, this is incorrect. We have records of a serial killer from the Western Han Dynasty around 91 BCE. Liu Pongli, Prince of Jidong, was the nephew of Emperor Jing and the cousin of Emperor Wu of the Western Han Dynasty. He was one of the five sons of Liu Wu, King Xiao of Liang. When his father died, the emperor divided Liang into five smaller provinces. Each province would be ruled by one of his five sons, Liu Pongli and his brothers. Prior to being king, Liu Pongli's records were spotless. Or at least his crimes were small enough that it went unnoticed. Though that doesn't mean he had a great reputation before taking rule. He was known for being incredibly arrogant and cruel. There were rules and etiquettes of how he should have interacted with his subjects. He decided that these rules were optional. And unfortunately for the people, he was anything but a benevolent ruler. He was powerful, well-connected, and an absolute tyrant. Once he took reign, all hell let loose. His behavior grew so much worse. We're not sure when or how quickly his killing spree started, but by the end of his reign, the people of Jidong were living in an absolute nightmare. According to records, he would maraud the streets at night, always with a group made up of friends, slaves, and fugitives hiding from the law. They weren't just wreaking havoc, they would raid houses, mercilessly slaughter citizens and their families, even looting and seizing their belongings just for sport. Remember, he was a king. He didn't have any reasons to do any of these things. He was doing it for fun. He enjoyed doing it. And he would get away with it for almost 30 years. The poor citizens lived in fear. By the end of his reigns, they were scared to venture out at night and even barricaded themselves indoors to avoid being slaughtered. What else could they do? The king was protected from repercussions and who could they even turn to? when they suspected that it was their lord who was slaughtering them. His confirmed victims would exceed a hundred, and the murders were known all across the kingdom. What's interesting is that his M.O. very much reminds me of the Manson family murders. Like the Manson murders, he would recruit and surround himself with like-minded disciples he would then take his devoted cult on killing sprees. Personally, I see many similarities between how the king conducted his murder sprees and the Tate LaBianca murders in 1969. The process of raiding a house, breaking in, and murdering everyone. As well as the aftermath. Prior to the event, people wouldn't lock their doors, but after the murders, people became hypervigilant and feared being out at night. Ammo. Check. Multiple body counts. Check. A complete disregard for human life. Check. Yep. 
pretty sure we have a serial killer on our hands. What happened to him in the end? There must have been karmic retribution for what he did to his citizens. I guess... As with all serial killers, all good must come to an end. Over a long period of time, evidence of his crimes steadily began to grow against him. Uneasy officials started suspecting the king of perpetuating the killings. Even rumors started circulating amongst the commoners of his kingdom. Eventually, the son of one of his victims accused him in a letter addressed to the emperor, and miraculously, the letter actually reached the emperor's hands. He was appalled and took the accusations seriously. A formal investigation was launched and around 116 or 115 BCE, he was found guilty and Liu Ponglei's killing spree came to an end. The court officials called for his execution but the emperor did not follow their request. Instead, Liu Ponglei was stripped of his title, position, and nobility. With his land reclaimed, he was banished to the Shangyong County to live as a commoner. If you think about it, technically he got away with murder. There weren't any real repercussion for his actions. Even if you wanted to argue that life as a peasant is a decent punishment for someone who used to be a king, but still, all those lives in his hands. How did he end up? We don't actually know. All records of him end there. For all we know, he could have kept killing or lived to a ripe old age. So, okay, this all happened over 2,000 years ago. How do we have records of this happening? We have the writings of the grand historian Sima Qian. Sima Qian was a historian during the early Han Dynasty, considered the father of Chinese historiography, known for the records of the grand historian or Shi Ji. This work covers a period of 2,500 years, from the time of the legendary Yellow Emperor to the rule of Emperor Wu of Han. It was in this writing that we have records of the atrocities committed by Liu Ponglei. Direct translated quotes include, He was arrogant and cruel and would go out on marauding expeditions with tens of slaves or young men who were hiding from the law, murdering people and seizing their belongings for sheer sport. And confirmed victims exceeded a hundred. And these murders were known across the kingdom, so people were afraid of leaving their homes at night. Is this historical record true? Did it actually happen? I'm half and half. I can't say that it definitely didn't happen, but there are evidence of it being political propaganda. Documentation of Liu Ponglei and his crimes only took up one paragraph. As in records of his existence, birth, family, reign, crimes, and punishment were summarized into one single paragraph. At first, you can think that this short mention was due to wanting to erase this figure from history. After all, he was apparently a terrible person. But if something as horrible as a killing spree happened with over a hundred victims, you would have expected more documentation. We should also take into account that around that time, Emperor Jing was focused on weakening the feudal kingdoms and consolidating his own power. Using an unforgivable crime to strip Liu Ponglei of his title and land would have been the most convenient decision. Execution wouldn't have been an option. He couldn't kill him because Liu Ponglei still had brothers ruling over the other lands, and taking his life would have had consequences that he didn't want to deal with. And I am going to be honest, Sima Qian probably isn't the most unbiased and trustworthy account. As great as his writing was, he was still just a person. 
meaning you still had to take it with a grain of salt. Especially taking into account how inaccurate and hateful his documentation was towards Emperor Qin Shi Huang. Just because of his own personal anger of the emperor taking over the state of Chu, because Sima Qin's ancestors were from that state. Also, technically, while this source can be considered as reliable, it's still only one source. We don't have any additional records of this event, nor have we found any archaeological finds supporting it either. Lastly, you have to keep in mind that this did possibly happen over 2,000 years ago. It's important to remember that the further you are from the narrative, the more exaggerated it can become. It can also be changed to fit different agendas. After all, history is written by the victors. Whether his brief reference was due to history wanting to forget him, or if he truly was a ruthless serial killer. You decide. I have a teespring if you like to support the channel. I have a lot of super cute designs that I'm really proud of, like this Halloween Hama one. So please check it out if you can. Link is in the description below. So what do you guys think? Do you think that Liu Pengli was truly a serial killer? Leave a comment down below because I would like to know. You can also let me know what topics you would like to see me cover in the future. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe to Jay Palace Yamingong. I would very much appreciate it. And until next time, happy Halloween! Zai Jinla! Bye bye!